Hi everyone, and welcome to another A and B Horror Movies video. I'm Aaron. I'm Ben. And today we are joined by Hollow Ground Pictures. Thank you, Stuart and Michael, for being with us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. Can't wait to uh, chat about your films. Um, so, Stuart, you are a producer, <clears throat> writer, and director. Um, Playing Cards came out in 2017. Was that your first film? Uh, so, Playing Cards was my first film, but I originally shot that back in 2007. But, oh my and God. I was on, yeah, so like I really originally shot back in 2007. I was only 21 years old when I made that movie. So I went through like literally 10 years of like hell trying to get it complete. I went through like many different oh like, episodes and like it was just it was just absolutely crazy. So uh, I got to the point that uh, when we finally finished it, that it was like, well, what should we do with it? So we submitted to some festivals and then we just realized that probably the best thing to do was to present a uh, freebie on our YouTube channel on yes. The, the type of work that we can deliver. Awesome. Yes, and, and actually, thank you for mentioning that. So Hollow Ground Pictures, you can check them out on YouTube, and they are also um, on Instagram at Hollow Ground Pictures. Um, but we're also going to talk about your latest film today, which is called Edwin. Um, Michael Lake is here, and Michael, you are the lead actor in that film. Um, and Stuart Robertson, yeah. you directed and wrote the script for it, um, right? And you have, I saw that you both have two upcoming projects, one called Casual Dating that you co-wrote together, as well as My Dying Heart, um, another co-wrote, another project that you co-wrote together as well. And Michael, you're the lead, I believe, in both of those, those films. Um, but before yeah. we get to those items, um, let's, and before we talk about Edwin, my first question I have for you both is, it's obvious that you've worked together for a while and you work well mm -hmm. together. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that relationship came about and and what it's like working together? We'll start off with an easy one. But would you would you like to start, Michael? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So um, <clears throat> Edwin was uh, was actually not the very first time we worked together. We did a film previously called uh, Days of Violence. And um, we worked on that one for quite a while and we did lots of cool and really interesting things there. And I think that that's where that like foundation of trust was like really built. Like we just discovered that we really liked working together. And then when the, when the opportunity to make Edwin came about, we did it um, in a very like grassroots kind of way. We, we, all, we sort of just did it ourselves and we procured the talent and we kind of like scoured all the resources shot it in Stuart's former apartment stuff like that so we <laughs> wanted to work together but I think it was like paramount working with someone that quickly and in like such an intense sort of way in such a short amount of time it was paramount to like have that 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 trust in place so I think we really just built uh, that working together um yeah, I think <laughs> I think that awesome. first film like built the foundation. And then when we realized we had something that clicked, it gave us the freedom to just work on as many projects as we could. Yeah. Very cool. Mm. Literally stole the words from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you guys get on pretty well then. You, you yeah. don't disagree with a great deal. Pretty quite straightforward. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, we yeah. never really had any issues, and we seem to be in the same wavelength. Yeah. So, so like when we were doing uh, originally, uh, we were doing before days of art, uh, I had this web series that we were doing called Series of Normal, and uh, that's how I first met Michael um, slash Days of Art, mm -hmm. and you know, it was just like you just had that, uh, just the relationship kind of just like it kind of like gelled sort of thing. It's like yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like when we did Edwin, and then it was just a very like like this this crazy shoot, like what Michael was saying, and it was just uh, uh, it, it was a crazy time for me because I was moving to another country. I oh, was God. getting married. Oh boy! Uh, I was shooting a film in like seven days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we just getting, we were just bringing like getting all these mixes together and having someone like Michael uh, to work alongside me. It it was fantastic because like even when I was stressed out he was able to balance it and, and vice mm -hmm. versa. And, you know, it's just a great working relationship. And since then, we've pretty much written, uh, he's been in all the future projects. He's like, it's like, it's just something special about Michael. It just, you can't really get into words sort of thing, but it's, yeah, it's great. That's <laughs> awesome. 
and and it just works, right? And and how do you yeah. how do you manage? Because um, Michael, you're in Canada, Stuart, you're in the UK. How do you manage um, working together when you're so far apart? Uh, it's it's a strange one because when we made uh, my dying heart, uh, that was uh, at the height in time of uh, COVID nineteen. Oh and so yeah. oh, we were yeah. we shooting that doing COVID-19 sort of thing. So it was just basically, mm-hmm. okay, so he's in Canada, I'm in Scotland. And it's oh, like, you're in Scotland. Oh, I thought you were in uh, well, the Well, that's... Well, same. you are now. Yeah, yeah, same thing. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's like, basically, so it's like, okay, so he's doing everything in, in Canada. And yeah. I'm like working behind the scenes here in the UK. And it's like... Mm-hmm. Uh, how and you got to be in that same wavelength sort of thing so it's like yeah. so there'll be times where I'll be like okay this is that how I want to do the shots and things like this this is what I want sort of thing so I relate yeah. to Michael and Michael would be like okay so I gotta get the actors involved gotta do this and that and it's just like you know yeah but doing like a long distance yeah. movie basically that's yeah. a really <laughs> difficult thing to do well, I can you know? and I felt like just because we have a really good relationship and um, we are on the same wavelength that it was actually pretty easy yeah not, not saying that it's <laughs> not easy yeah. just it's just it, it was just easier said yeah always to do it. when we when we did edwin we knew it was very very ambitious and when we did my dying heart we knew it was like very experimental this method of kind of an actor shooting himself and and me and kind of producing half of the film in separate countries and stuff but um yeah, I think that I, I really do think that that trust was like so, so important there, because if you're going to embark on this crazy adventure, you got to have your best friend there with you. <laughs> awesome. That's yeah. really nice to hear. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did watch Edwin and it's quite awesome. You guys really pulled it off. Um, would you say, oh, I, mean, you. I would refer to it as a psychological thriller, perhaps? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's an uh, upcoming film. Can you... Uh, well, I guess we'll talk about a release date uh, in a moment. Uh, but how did the film Spoiler come free. about? What was the? Uh, go ahead, Ben. What? Spoiler free. Oh, spoiler free. Yes, we'll try not yeah. to spoil anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. What, what was that? So I missed that. Spoiler free. We'll try not. Oh, to not spoiler spoil free. Yeah. About the film. I will do my best. We will. We will too. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So how did uh, the how did the film come about? How did you get the idea to to write um, a piece like this? There are some kind of psycho elements to it yeah so so a spoiler free as they can go come it was an idea i conceived about maybe like 10 years ago i had originally written a script where it was like more like a like a ghost love story type thing mm-hmm. and you know and i could never really figure out what the ending of that film actually was so uh when i broke the news to michael that hey i'm gonna be uh uh, leaving the country and moving things like that. Michael's like, oh, we got to we got to do something, we got to do something. And I was like, well, I have this screenplay called Edwin that's been on the back burner for like many, many years. And he's like, oh, can I read it? So I, I send him the first draft and he's like, oh, there's really something we can do from this. So I, I was looking at the script and I was like, oh, let me take my favorite elements from the script and let me turn it into a new story altogether. So basically what I did was I took the... El- how do, I, how do I say this? Uh, so I took the elements. <laughs> the, the, I would just say that I took the elements of the bedroom scenes. Okay. okay yep. as mm-hmm. Spoiler free as possible, and I adapted the screenplay out of that, and I worked around it. So uh, nice. Basically, giving it <laughs> uh, so basically focusing on very few locations, one mainly a one location set, and that's basically how the story came to be. Uh, Michael read it and he was like, "Oh, this film should have been shot yesterday." So that's basically how it came to be. <laughs> yeah, how many still, days did it take? Um, go ahead, Michael. I still have that very clear memory of just like um, reading the script, sitting down, and just reading it in one sitting, which is a rare phenomenon for me, but also a very special one because I knew if it had that kind of um, capturing kind of element I was like I really want to put this on screen like like he said I, w- I want to make this film yesterday practically um and we had worked together on on some on something previously like we said but it just it really just did feel like the the right project at the right time and it felt like we were just like capturing lightning in a bottle sort of <laughs> yeah awesome awesome so um I watched it today actually oh nice. and um it, it was cool and I really liked it and I, I don't know if, it's not really a spoiler and um, there's some really cool usage of colours in this film 
So when he was writing a screenplay, obviously, and then um, you obviously sent it over to Michael, did it change much from like the screenplay to screen? Because I, I just know it says, like, like I said, the colours and stuff. Did you write that in as I want these kind of vibrant colours here? And Well, I've <laughs> always been the filmmaker that has always inspired me to become a filmmaker has always been Dario Argento. So I've always used, awesome. I've always loved his use of color. And when I write my films, I've always thought of, oh, it would be cool if I wrote this scene with uh, having that color. So like, like I already have, like I may not have an, like a full idea in my head uh, for colors per se, but I do have a good gut instinct of uh, what this scene should be palette wise what that scene should be palette wise yeah and i would what i'll do is like i'll shoot i'll shoot a, like maybe like a shot and be like oh it, oh oh i can see it in my head it, it, it looks good it looks good like that but then i'll be like oh wait a second that might not look good so maybe it's like okay I'll, I'll change it to this instead of maybe make it a little bit more intense or a little bit less intense so sort of yeah. but yeah i kind of do have an idea when i'm writing it but i wouldn't say it's a hundred percent i'm more focused on getting the best story out possibly yeah as, as possible but uh yeah it's it is then i do like the colors in edwin like it's there are things yeah. that also in edwin that i don't necessarily have like picked up like for example like we had it at one festival and uh the horrific hope film festival and uh they were like oh we want to have it part of the the mental health program and i'm thinking myself oh i don't recall edwin being a mental health movie but then when i thought about it it's like oh Actually, yeah, maybe yeah, it actually totally. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. Totally, it totally is. Sort of thing. So it's like I'm, I'm, I'm waiting a story just to have fun and to like to surprise the audience, you know. But yeah. there's also layers to it that I may not have necessarily picked up on my end right away. If, if, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Aaron. So, um, my, <laughs> well, actually, I, I do want to make one comment. One thing I loved about this movie and as well as playing cards is that it was anything but predictable. There were so many twists thrown in. Yeah. And then Edwin, there are so many unexpected twists. Mm -hmm. um, like once you start to see the bedroom scenes, I was like, oh, boy, this is going in a direction that I didn't think. And then it just keeps kind of piling on from there. Um, so really nice job with that. Um, Michael, what was it like playing a character like Edwin? So he, I would say he's an unreliable narrator to some extent. And also as he's, yeah. he is discovering things about himself, the audience is kind of right there with him learning what he's learning in the process. Um, so what I guess, what was your, um, how did you get motivated to play a character like this? Uh, I felt like the arc of Edwin was like so beautifully just kind of set into the film, the way that he just kind of, goes from living this humdrum kind of confused quarter life crisis to just all this stuff that's happening around him. <laughs> um, so I really liked how that arc was just already written into Stewart's screenplay. And I think we mostly shot it in order with maybe a few key exceptions, but um, so it was, it, it played out narratively, you know, for Edwin the same way it did for me. And yeah, I just liked, um, was see, kind of seeing the story progress in real time and kind of watching this Edwin's story unfold as I, as Michael acted alongside it was a very like unique and interesting challenge. Um, but yeah, I, I, something about like the personality specifically of a writer, I was really, really drawn to that because there are some really good um, stories, like a lot of what Stephen King has written, the surrogate kind of per protagonist yes. character is a writer. Mm -hmm. And I also, I had come from a family of writers. My parents are in journalism. So I, oh, I like that. Cool. I wanted to add the like authenticity of like, how does a writer kind of act? Like usually they're so yes. in their head. They're they're in their head a lot because they, they're just overflowing with ideas and stuff. <laughs> so I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to have that kind of um, internal conflict kind of going on constantly. You know, when you're, awesome. when you're when you're a writer trying to crack the third act of your screenplay or whatever, it's the most important thing in the world to you. And I want to see Edwin kind of struggling with that. And then obviously the events of the film unfold around him. So that affects yes. 
his mental state and how he reacts to everything. But um, yeah, I just, there, there was so many, so many layers to that character and everything that happened in the story that I found it, I found it really, really re rewarding to portray him. Yeah. Very well <laughs> said. Um, and I like the fact that he is struggling, like the third act um, yeah. is the hardest part to write. Yeah. And uh, I like that you could see it playing out. So it wasn't yeah. just him writing it down. You could see it playing out. And yeah. it was a really nice touch with the pencil. Um, because not only is yes. it writing with the pencil, but then it also <laughs> serves a, a very important purpose in the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't say anything else. I want to talk <laughs> about it, but I, I, just, I just can't. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah. we could. I, if you want, we could always say spoiler. But I don't know. We're doing a pretty good job not giving anything away. We're in, yeah. it's intriguing, right? You got to see the film. Yes, I, I would say for people watching Edwin for the first time, is the best to go in not knowing anything about it. Uh, I think that's what's so great about it is the trailer just gives, I would say, gives absolutely nothing away. Yeah. And I think creating a trailer for a film like that is hard because there is a lot of spoilers in the film. And the, it's the type of film that if you know nothing mm -hmm. or little about it, the surprise, the surprises, and the outcomes of it will be will blow you away. And I'm not yes. just saying that because I've made yeah. the movie. I agree. You know, yes. But it is a film that, for the first time, like people don't know anything about it. I guarantee you, you will be blown away by it. Yes. Yeah. But I watched it today, and I, I've sort of like sat there, and I was like, I've got this, I've, I've assessed this, and then it just flipped, and I was like. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> so that even, was really even the last five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I call that the hologram pictures way. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a very good way. <laughs> yes, awesome. Um, obviously, uh, we were saying about the bedroom scenes. Um, and there's a lot shot there, but then also there is a few other locations. How far apart were these other locations, or is it all pretty close together and? I'm trying, I'm trying to think the other locations. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So we had so we had the cabin sequence, which was probably yes, a good yes. uh let's talk about miles. So probably a good like 75, 80 miles away from the actual location. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's it was some distance. So we were able to go with up off the mm -hmm. whole weekend. It was just it was it was not the easiest shoot because we did it during I think it was Labor Day weekend. Okay. And so you'd have all the other cottages and they would all be parting and things like that. So it's like I, the, the audio was just absolutely. <laughs> You're like, keep it down. Oh, <laughs> and then you, and, and they could tell. I, mean, I kid you not, they could tell that you were shooting a movie. So they had to even be louder, you know, be like, oh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get picked up. And the audio was like, no, no, I don't want any of that stuff. You know, like, uh, like it, it was just such a struggle. So it was just like, okay, so we made it work. Uh, so there, there was the cabin scene. We were up there for one day, and uh, the cemetery stuff was just down the street, so that wasn't so so bad. Mm -hmm. And everything else was pretty much close to where I lived in Toronto, so it was mm -hmm. it was pretty oh, bad. Cool. Yeah. Now you was... lived in the apartment that you used. Yes. Did I... yes. Oh, that's cool. Yes, I did. Yeah. So like, yeah. uh, so what, what I did was I shipped my wife out. Uh, no, I shipped her out to <laughs> I shipped her out to uh, the UK about maybe a month, a month and a half before I moved out. Uh, so she was up in the UK preparing for the wedding and everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, so I know I've got six weeks uh, to pack everything up <laughs> and yeah. to shoot a movie <laughs> and to do everything. Yeah. So yeah, ba basically, like, so it's like, okay, this is the perfect location to shoot a movie we are doing this and that's that's what we did well you can tell watching it that everything just kind of fell into place and came together yeah. and that's mm -hmm. what makes for the best films um in, in my opinion um i do have one question about the editing process so i thought the editing was awesome um do you both are you both involved or were you involved with the editing process of this one it's all me it's, it's all, all you yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> well you, you did an awesome job <laughs> It's, it's just the sound, it's, the editing, everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so, so it's all me for video. I have a very talented friend. His name is Matthias. He looks after all the audio and all the music as well. And then we had a local Toronto like uh, metal band, I, I guess you would say, called Botang. And they provided all the metal tracks for, mm -hmm. for the film as well. So it was basically we wanted to uh, have a little bit of Toronto talent in the oh, film cool. as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but as for the video, that was all me. Mm-hmm. And all the music and everything else was everybody else. Uh, and that took a long yeah. time to actually yeah. do it. It's not uncommon, but because the music was added in post, all the scenes where we're listening to the heavy metal, we were kind of just reacting to mm-hmm. nothing and talking talking unnaturally loud so we could talk to each other but it was <laughs> yeah, that was all that was all added later we didn't even know what the music would be at the time oh, well, yeah, we, didn't, we didn't even think it was going to even be that, <laughs> that kind of music in general so yeah. it actually worked out it was, it was a nice touch that that yeah. song I'm, I'm not sure who sings it um, i should have done some research on that but it was a nice touch adding that in yeah um and then it's, and, then it's, and I wanted to do it a way that for the final shot, it doesn't give you enough time to register what actually has happened, and then the song kicks in. Yes. The song kicks yes, in, yes. Oh, just to be like, throw your bag, but what? <laughs> oh, it was so good what when the happen? credit and the credits start rolling. Yes. That yeah. was amazing. I was watching it. I, I yeah. watch them a lot of my movies at the gym. Um, so I was on the treadmill, and I actually listened to most of the song and watched most of the credits, because like, I don't know. I was just sort of processing everything I had just seen. Did, did you turn up the speed on the treadmill? Because it's quite. <laughs> I started sprinting. No, <laughs> no I haven't, and I haven't seen the guy who was sprinting next to me when I was watching on <laughs> Skinner yes. Marink, the new. Oh, oh yeah. I, wa- I, I watched that last night. Oh, what did you think? I thought it was phenomenal. Oh, really? I know. Yeah, I I really liked it. I know there's a lot of like. Uh, people hate it and people would love it, but yeah, I know that was right down the middle, but I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So what's your theory? We did a review video. I, we're going to digress here a little bit. What's your theory, man? Do you think they're in purgatory? <laughs> Are they... I, I, they you know, this is like a whole lot of coma? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to honestly, do it. We'll do another skinnamarink video. I think it's... Honestly, I think it's purgatory for me personally, and I feel I'm going to take mm. a different twist on what people have been saying. I'm gonna say that it's more like like a child abuse thing, and it's yep. to the eyes. Of, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say it's to the eyes of the dad, basically, and the dad is like this kind of like like this killer type thing, oh. and that is the is the monster, sort of thing, and and it's to and so there's just certain things that happen in the film that was like, oh wait a second, that's that's really strange. It's like the kid is hiding away from from this, this something, yeah. this this thing. Yeah. You know, and he's like, and he's on the phone, he's on the telephone, he's talking, and it's like, he's having, it's like, and it's like, you know, your dad is supposed to be your protector, you know, right. but there's all these, there's, but there's all these stories where it's, uh, uh, of families, you know, not being able to handle the children and, you know, they off the kids, you know, sort of thing. So it's, I wouldn't be surprised if that's it, but there's no guarantee that's, that's why it yeah. is, because at the end of the day, it's an experimental film, you know, it's well, all and that's ex- exactly mm-hmm. what you may or may not you think. Want- yeah, I think you're supposed to just take away what you think you're supposed to take away from it. So, yes. well, I think that's you, amazing. You watched it, Michael. Great. I haven't seen it yet, unfortunately. I'll watch it uh, soon, though. Cool. No, watch it alone in the dark and be patient. Yes, and, okay. and, 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 and very patient. Very patient. <laughs> <laughs> very patient. <laughs> the test of patience. I always say it's about 20 minutes too long because I feel like you could still tell your story. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 80 yep. minutes, not 100 minutes. Mm. Uh, but it's still a good watch. But I was thinking afterwards that I think mm. it would be a great experience in virtual reality. Like if you experience that yeah. film in VR, it would be breathtaking. It would be absolutely breathtaking. And if you're doing it's oh, yeah, a good VR point. experience where you could, you could look around, but you don't actually. Uh, interfere with what's happening. I have like the depth, right? Like with when the yes, Barbie have... doll is on the ceiling. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. You, and you can't do anything. You're just you're just in for the ride. And I think if it was a VR experience, I think it would be out of this world. Yes. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Well, we went down a road I didn't think we would. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we we always so track anyway, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we forget what um, our videos are about. Um, go ahead, Ben. I was all about the screenplay and and scripts and stuff earlier. So. Um, when you was filming, Michael, did you like? Uh, was there any of it that changed where you thought, "Oh, I've just had a great idea for this, so I'm gonna shout to Stuart, see if this is fine, and do this"? Or did you follow the script quite like Im- improvise, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. bef- actually, before we ever went to camera, I I believe we did sit down and kind of went through the script and like line by line. Cause I'm obsessed with like naturalistic sounding dialogue. Like, okay. ha- mm-hmm. like I, I got, if I'm going to say this, it's got to sound authentic. So we yeah. actually, we actually sat through the entire screenplay 
before we ever went to camera, just made sure we were happy with all the lines, um, rehearsed it with our fellow actors a little bit before the day. So I think a lot of those, there's always, you know, little micro things that come up on the day in terms of uh, blocking or staging or how to say a line or whatever. But uh, I think we actually did pre-plan like quite a bit of the stuff. Um, we knew we didn't have a ton of time to film it. We knew we were never going to be allowed to reshoot anything. So we were like, yeah, we, we wanted to have it like crisp and ready for the day. You have to get it right, right? Yeah. One shot. Were there some scenes where you only did once and they were just perfect or, I, or not? Yes. Does that ever happen? Yeah. It does happen, but it's always good to take a second shot. So yes, to have, have a I always do a safety course. shot just when the safe shot. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Anything is possible. And I'm not being fussy <laughs> when I'm directing too. Like, I'll, I'll let the actor, like, uh, any actor, you know, do their thing. But if there's something I don't like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, just don't do that again. Oh, uh, or yeah. change it or change it a little bit like this. But I'm, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty open to uh, to the actors and everything like that. But yeah. uh, there's certain mm. times where it's like, mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I don't so, think so, we ever really straight off script for Edwin because a lot of the things that Edwin says have like intention that pay off later. So we did, we definitely did, you know, kind of rehearse it a bunch and memorize it and then perform it as such. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Definitely very calculated. Um, yeah. It, be, uh, <laughs> I've only seen it once, but it would be interesting to watch it back again, knowing what I know now, what's yeah. coming um, yeah. in the end. Uh, so I guess my last question about Edwin is how can people see it? When will it be released? And will there be a physical copy? Do you know? That we find profit. Once we find good distribution for it, basically. Yeah. Like, You're still yeah, looking. Just, okay. Yeah, we're still searching right. for it. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, we've been mm -hmm. rejected by a few distributors. Mm -hmm. so, but, oh, that's too oh. bad. But we're, um, we're still hopeful. We're still hopeful for it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, a, it's a great film. It, it should be seen. If uh, any of our if any of our viewers are interested in seeing it, um, I'll reach out to you and, and let you know. Absolutely. Um, uh, I just cool. I just want to say. So, what do you think? Because this this blows people's minds when I when I say this. I Michael thinks that <laughs> he knows what, exactly what I'm going to say. How much do yes. you think it cost me to make that movie? What do you think the budget was? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing out. I don't know. Uh, ten grand. That's good. That's that's good. Well, what about you, Ben? I was going to say about twelve. Oh, awesome! Awesome! That's cool. That's very cool. Um, mm -hmm. what was it? Two grand. Two grand. Wow. Yeah, Canadian. So that would be Canadian, less. even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I didn't mean to say it like that. No, no. Yeah, I, mean, no. no it, it, I just know cool. the exchange rate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. I, I, was, I was in a festival in England, and uh, I was, yes. you know, there was all these films that cost like a, a couple hundred grand to make. And, you know, and they're like, oh, and they're all curious. And I was like, oh, how much? And they were like, oh, how much did the Edwin cost to make? And I was like, oh, it cost about two grand. And they were just like. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's very <laughs> impressive. You know, so you mean, you mean... I was just what, yeah. That? No, I was going to. Me and Aaron was uh, on about this the other day, and we was, um, they said like skin and rink going back to that cost fifteen thousand to make. Yeah. And I was like, how did it cost fifteen thousand to make? I, I, you know, I, I I thought the same thing too. Yeah. It was, no, no. I have a theory because they had to take the windows and doors away, and if you have to get a oh, contractor to do anything, like that. <laughs> that's a lot. I, 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 think I don't know. I know. I joke. The lens. The lens. I think they spent on the lens then like whatever mm. like there's obviously some some things like like <clears> doors <throat> and, and the, all the all the lego and things like that but uh yeah um, that's the most expensive thing you could probably pay 15 grand for a lego set yeah. <laughs> 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 that's a good one ben but, but, it, but it, it, the it, sound was the sound in the movie they put a lot of money into the sound because the sound tells yeah. a lot of the story so maybe that it, it just goes to show that you don't need tons of money to make a, a film and have it be a success oh yeah what, the blair witch project didn't that cost like yeah 10 grand mm -hmm. something like that um, maybe more no. more of <laughs> It, it, oh yeah, it costs way more because I think they shot it on film, so it costs way more than. Uh, is it a hundred grand? Way more than Skinner Marek. 
Yeah. What was that? Oh, the Blair Witch Project. Okay. Yeah, it was about 65, 70 mm-hmm. grand. But the but the whole the whole idea behind Blair Witch Project is quite brilliant because they they created the law of it like years before they actually shot the film. Yeah. So they already had that in place, which was yeah. Uh, sort of thing, right? okay, at, okay. But you look at Skin the Moon that costs 15k, you look at uh, Paranormal Activity that only costs about 15k as well, and it shows that you don't need a lot of money to actually be a successful film. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you don't really see many narrative films like uh, a movie like, say, Edmund, for example, mm-hmm. uh, you know, become a, a very successful film. You never that know. Cost, like, let's say that like, you cost like that, cost like two or three grand to make. Yeah, oh, well, hey, people love twists, and there's some good ones in this. Thank you, thank for you sure. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna ask because we sometimes ask us actually, we might ask all of our um guests we have on what's your uh favorite horror films? Do you like to start, Michael? Sure, <laughs> um, I really do. <laughs> I do love Blair. I live do, do love Blair Witch. That's actually one of the first I ever remember seeing. Um, I'm a big fan of lots of classic uh, Hitchcock films. Like every year, I'll watch like Psycho and The Birds and Vertigo and stuff like that. Awesome. Um, but one, uh, it's older now, but it, and it's been franchised and all that. But I really, really love the original Scream movie. I th- I thought yes. the first time okay. I saw that, awesome. I was, I just think it's such a fun commentary on the genre as a whole so and i and i do think that that movie has a fantastic twist and i always really liked hanging out with those characters and stuff so yeah that's definitely one of my top ones awesome awesome choices yes (laughs) yeah kevin uh, williamson really brought horror back in the mid 90s it was kind of uh, yeah in a bad state yeah i I just watched i know what you did last summer again again last night oh very nice yeah (laughs) <laughs> how about how about yes great film how about you Stuart? if you can guess the two tattoos on my arm then you're true horror legends because they're my two they're my two favorite horror films of all time uh they're, they're michael, characters. michael myers i can't see the, the movies actually can you see uh sort of so up and then <laughs> You see that one? Oh, Black Christmas. Oh, That's Black my Christmas. Top three, man. I love Black that Christmas. film. Black Christmas is the birth of slasher films. I love that movie. Princess. Yes. Did you get? No. I, did you get the Scream Factory 4K release that they released? I've only uh, got, in December. Uh, no, I've only got uh, uh, whatever the Blu-ray release was. The Blu-ray is yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And what, so what was? Oh, so the other one's Deep it. Red. It's oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Deep Red. Uh, Argento, right? Uh, yeah, I get to it. It's my, yeah. it's the film that actually did get me into filmmaking. And it's just absolutely out of this world. I need to it's, see that one. Oh, Deep Red is so good. But if you don't watch it, watch the, watch the two hour cut. Don't watch the, the hour and 28 minute version. That's just. Watch the longer version. Yeah, watch, <laughs> watch, watch, watch the good. Uh, Other films I like is like the original Black Christmas. Yes, um, yes. I do like Video Drone. Uh, I do have a mm-hmm. kick ass Video Drone tattoo. It's, uh, bad. I, I do like, uh, um, Oh, what is it? In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, those oh, yeah. Of Sam Neill. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. Cool. Yeah. Sutter, have, Sutter Kane. Have you lived a good book lately? Uh, there's a great uh, tagline. Oh, there's, there's so many. Even like the new horror films. Like the new horror films are good too. Like my favorite horror film of last year was uh, very, de- very, very divisive, but I thought Nope was out of this world. Yeah. Nope was great. I liked it too. Uh, but yeah, uh, Black Christmas and Deep Red are my top two horror films of all time. And, and you know, we were talking about the audio, like you added the music in and you had to pretend like it was playing in the background. That whole intro scene of Black Christmas when the guys talk, the creepiest prank phone call, right? They added that in after. So the actors were just listening to nothing, right? I think I heard that. That's funny. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know how true this is, but like I've heard like through the grapevine that, you know, the Black Christmas is mm-hmm. the like halloween is the unofficial sequel to black christmas you know that's what i've heard through the years because like if oh. because you were saying like uh they were saying like let's see, i don't know how true this is but you were saying that if uh back in the day that uh, john carpenter had a conversation with bob clark and asked mm-hmm. uh, if you were to do a sequel to black christmas what would it be and it laid the grounds for halloween and if you actually put both films side by side they are quite similar 
Mm -hmm. That's true, just in a high school setting. No, you, you got, obviously, the locations are different. But like it, Halloween, it, Tumblr. It's, 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 you know? You know and yeah, and, no, I've never heard that before. <laughs> you know, but, you know, like, you, like Black Christmas was, like, 1974, Halloween 1978. So, you know, it's not, like, people say that Halloween is the start of slasher films, but I don't know. I would say Black Christmas is... is and it did it so well. Yes, and it is mm -hmm. so well. Like, I know the director saw it more as, like, a... Uh, like uh um more yeah, like murder. Oh, what was that one? Uh, Bob Clark, right? The director. Yeah, Bob Clark. He saw it. he didn't really see it as a slasher film. He saw it more like a psychological uh mm. thriller. But it does have very like slasher elements right. in the film. Right. So yeah. Well, and um, it, it inspired him to do a Christmas story, right? Yeah, Christmas story. And then what he did what uh mm. what children shouldn't play with dead things and yes, that was that was um, uh what's the um Death Scream, I think. Yeah, uh, the, Death Scream. He comes home from Vietnam and he's like a zombie, I think. I've, I've, I've owned that movie for years. I've never watched of it. Of course, I've never seen it. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. You have to watch it. It's so good. So, it, I'm really, I've just got to ask this. Um, as uh, Stuart, you, you like writing all the, the scripts and stuff and Moko, you like to act. Have you two ever talked about if you was given the chance to resurrect a franchise mm. what would it be oh. Oh. i mean if you could write the next chapter of the story and if so michael what character would you go for if you did choose a certain film oh that's a good uh, one you know I, you know I i i know the answers to this because we've always talked about it and now i can't remember it <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> the way it goes um I would probably do, you know, I would actually, to be honest with you, I was, there was a movie I saw last weekend, okay, it's not, and I saw A Knock at the Cabin, okay. Yes, I saw and I, thought, it, yeah. I thought the film was very mediocre yeah. and didn't really make a lot of sense and didn't really go by what they were supposed to go by. And I said to my girl afterwards, I was like, you know what, A Knock at the Cabin is the type of movie that I could see myself making because i think a movie like knock at the cabin should be much darker and grittier and mm -hmm. really really push the boundaries and i felt i felt it played itself way too safe but i'm not saying that's the movie i would like to make because mm -hmm. definitely not i would go with the tommy knockers oh cool oh yeah i, mean, yeah. I would go with the tommy knockers that's what i would go with great book i, I was gonna say, yeah the miniseries the alien story would be tracy great. lords was in that Go ahead, Michael. Uh, yeah, Stephen King is definitely someone I've looked up to my entire life and someone we've definitely bonded over. So like the, and we are kind of living through this renaissance now where a lot of his stuff is being remade because we have mm -hmm. the technology to do it again and do it better. So like working on any adaptation of his would purely be bliss, be a dream. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a great answer. <laughs> Very talented, right, Stephen King? It'd be cool maybe yeah, to see yeah. a new misery. I don't, I don't know if yeah. Andy Wilkes could ever not be Kathy Bates. Yeah. Um, all right, well, wow. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, even when Stephen King is on the down, he's still pretty good. So. Yeah. Yes, very much so. He's the um, king for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> I, <dropped. laughs> I had a dad joke the other day, and I was like, guess Stephen King's son is named Berger. <laughs> My kids are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, I wanted to talk about see you can and you can use that if you want. Um, I wanted to talk about playing cards, but we're kind of running out of time. But I will say, very intense thriller, bloody. Um, there's some great kill scenes in that. I love the black and white approach. It almost made it even yeah. more difficult to watch at times. Like there's one stabbing mm -hmm. moment that hurt. Um I don't want to give anything away because it's on your uh, YouTube channel. So anyone watching can go ahead yeah. to uh, Hollow Ground Pictures and check out playing cards on on there. What were you going to say, Stuart? Were you gonna oh, I, was say, I was just going to say, you can give the spoilers away in playing cards because I, well, I that... well, it was just so long ago that uh, I, I just, there's, there's so much I love about playing cards. It was my yeah. first film. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think when you watch playing cards and then you watch Edwin, you can see how much I've evolved as a filmmaker. You know, like I was mm -hmm. like I, I shot I did playing cards. I was 21 years old. You look at Edwin, I did that in my 30s. So it's just kind of like it's like yes, there's yes. it's a huge gap. And it's like I feel like I've just 
it's like, okay, the first 20 minutes or so of playing cards is pretty, uh, I wouldn't even say it's, uh, it's a bit rocky. Uh, <laughs> but once it gets going, yeah, oh, yeah. As soon as it gets to the farmhouse, <laughs> it's like an entirely different movie. It's like, it's, it's yeah. focused, it knows exactly what it wants to be, and it's, you know, and I think it's mm-hmm. pretty flawless once it gets to the farmhouse. But you can see it's like, oh, it's a first-time filmmaker. He, he's, he's, he's trying to understand the craft, things like that. Yes, and then you see Edwin. It's like, oh, that's actually very different from what playing cards is, and yeah. you know, it's the my two babies for very different reasons. Well, I, I like the twists. Um, so with playing cards, the there were characters that I thought would come back and didn't, and then the character that it ended up kind of being their story. I didn't expect that either. So similar to Edwin, there were twists that I didn't see coming. Um, I thought it was <laughs> masterful storytelling. To be, I honest. just want to say I watch a lot of horror movies. Like you can you won't really see by my collection the room, yes. my collection so it's all packed away in a spare bedroom. I see. Uh, but I love horror films and if I'm gonna make a movie, I don't wanna make a movie where people will feel unexpected when they watch it. You know, it's yes. like yes. I wanna make I wanna make something that's like and have someone be wowed by it and be like, Oh, I didn't see that coming. Or or when people say it's like, Oh, I saw that coming, it's like bullshit. You did you did <laughs> Right, right. I see dead people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. You, you... <laughs> um, all right, well, we don't want to keep you too long, but we thought we would throw in some horror trivia um, because yeah. it's kind of fun. I've got a few categories here, thanks to uh, Trivial Pursuit Horror Version. Okay. I can't read it backwards. Can you guys read it? Paranormal. Oh, I, I can see. Monsters. Yeah. I'll let you choose the honors, Michael. Ah. We can do a couple. Um... We usually do like two or three. Yeah. Um, paranormal. Let's do right. paranormal. Okay, that sounds good. Yep. I was just psychological, but. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Speaking of Stephen King, uh, I don't want to hold the answer up. What U.S. city does the supernatural Randall flag use as a kingdom in the miniseries The Stand in 1994? I think I know this. Uh, um, what city, the... right? Where, where the evil. The is evil. It, I just I just watched the remake recently too. Is it Austin? Nope, it's uh, Las Vegas. Ah. Las Vegas, that makes sense. City of Sin, yeah. right? That's where the, all the evil <laughs> characters go. That makes yeah, yeah. sense. Uh, uh, let's see. Why don't we can do a couple more? Yeah, let's do. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with. Uh, let's, let's go with monster. monster. Oh, like a good monster. I gotta look at yeah. that's yellow, right? Uh. Oh, yeah. Huh. What Dean Koontz novel features a monster called the Ancient Enemy? Well, I don't know many Dean Koontz. The only, the only yeah, come on. We're, we're you know, King fans. We don't read Koontz. Phantoms. <laughs> Phantoms comes to mind because, uh, you know. Which, uh, which one did you say? Which, it is Phantom. It's Phantom. Oh, 1983. Nice. That's, it. You got it right. <laughs> That's a great film. Yeah. I think I read the book too. Affleck was um, the bomb and Phantoms. Yes. Phantoms. <laughs> All right, let's do one more or one or two more. Psychological then. Let's do psychological. Then. Psychological. Yeah, psychological. Wait, wait, wait. What color right. is that? That's the light purple. All right. Uh, in the Twilight Zone episode, Penchants to Dream, what was Edward Hall afraid to do for fear he would die? Well, it's called Penchants to Dream. So maybe, I don't really watch maybe go to don't sleep. Really watch. Yeah, I was going to say sleep. Sleep. He did indeed yeah. die in his sleep. All right. Well, that one's kind of lame. Let me do another, another same category. Uh, <laughs> what <Sure>. is, <laughs> oh, that's also Twilight Zone. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, what killer does Hatch Harrison become psychically connected to in Hideaway in 1995? Gosh, oh. right. Hideaway. Was that Alicia Silverstone? That's the, that's the Jeff, Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum movie. movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the director of the lawnmower, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know. Psychically uh, connected to? Oh, no, nobody would know. Oh, this. he was. Wasn't he psychically connected to the kid? It says Jeremy Nyburn. Yeah. Is that I the kid? Know. Jeremy <laughs> Nyburn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, I, I, th- I think he's, I think he's the kid. I think he's connected to the uh, what we like a teenager or something. I've only seen that once. 
Oh, oh here's yeah. an. I, I, we'll, do, I, 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 we'll do one more. What Rolling Stone song does uh, Azazel sometimes sing or hum as he possesses people in Fallen, 1998, the Denzel Washington oh, it's, movie? Uh, it's uh, Paint It Black. No. Wait. Can he, can he devil? No. no. I wouldn't no. have gotten this. It, no, it's not Paint It Black? Nope, it's time is on my side. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm no good at this game. <laughs> I know, some of these questions are tough. <laughs> That's funny yeah. though. People oh, will... none of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good trivia game, you know. Yeah. Um, I got Phantom, so I was happy with Phantom. Yeah, yeah. You, so I think you win. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um well awesome this has been great thank you guys for chatting with us um again you can check out hollow ground pictures on instagram at hollow ground pictures and on youtube to check out some of their films including playing cards and hopefully edwin um, will be available soon for everyone to watch um so uh as always if uh, there's anything you'd like us to cover in a future video add a comment and we will consider it yeah <laughs> Uh, Instagram, follow us over there. Um, if you come past this video, hit the like and subscribe. And cheers for watching, as always. And thank you guys for joining. This has been awesome. Yeah, definitely. Thank, thank you. you very much. This is lots of fun. Thank you. It's wicked. <laughs>